what's up guys it's cjax back with another video and today i'm going to be giving my spoiler review for guardians of the galaxy volume 3 now this is being said to be although you know the conclusion to all these guardians characters you know that came from the first movie from the second movie and all the way up until this point and overall i was expecting a lot from this movie i was expecting it to be amazing did it live up to those expectations let's talk about it so without further ado let's get into the guardians of the galaxy volume 3 review now i want to start off this review by saying that this movie is easily better than about 97 percent of the stuff that we've seen from marvel in the last year or two everyone's saying it's the best mcu film since endgame i don't believe that but even if it was that's not a huge bar to hit let's be honest most of this stuff has been absolute trash now going into this film i did have those high expectations it's being touted to be very emotional and you know amazing movie and a great conclusion to these characters and overall I will say it is a pretty solid movie now there are some things that I really liked and there are some things that I didn't like as much but overall it's a pretty solid film so I want to go ahead and talk about what I liked about the movie first now the main thing I liked in this movie is the characters the characters and the interactions between them is what makes this movie you know without all these great emotional moments or these great scenes whether it's funny emotional not funny or you know just serious whatever it is all these scenes are really what build up the quality of this movie in my personal opinion opinion and starting with rocket raccoon man they deliver a lot of his backstory throughout this movie through these flashback scenes that they do here and there and honestly man they do a good job with most of the stuff i think there's a lot of benefits that come from giving rocket this backstory but there are some things that come from this that are you know adverse effects that i don't think are that good but we'll talk about that later but yes rocket was really good bradley cooper's voice acting in this movie was very very well done and some of the emotional stuff with rocket hits pretty hard man it's sad stuff and you know to see them finally flesh out his backstory Story is something that fans have been wanting and to finally get that and you know it fitting for his story arc of kind of at the end of this movie he basically becomes the leader of the new guardians team that's formed in the post credit scenes and you know to see the journey and the maturation of the character find out who he is why he is the way that he is and why we should hate the high evolutionary the villain of this movie who's an absolute piece of garbage but yes um, you know, seeing why Rocket is the way that he is and who he is, I thought that journey of kind of self-discovery, but not really because he's not really alive in the current, you know, state because he's in a coma most of the movie, but... You know, seeing him go through this backstory and really seeing who he is was very nice. And secondly, Drax in this film is definitely one of the highlights as well. We finally got to see some of those emotional scenes. You know, Nebula tells Drax, and I thought this was the highlight of his character in this film. She tells him, you're not meant to be a destroyer. You're meant to be a father. And, you know, we also have a line where Drax is talking to kids in a cage and he goes like, yeah, I had a daughter like you one time. And, you know, them slowly starting to lead and allude to Drax's backstory. You know, I thought that was really nice because that's what in the Guardians 1 I thought made Drax interesting is this hidden past and this hidden backstory and you know how he's trying to I guess cover it up with humor when in reality they should just feed into that and give them more scenes because the, the scenes with Drax when they're talking about his daughter and just about serious stuff with him in general it's pretty good it really is man it's emotional some of the stuff is and you know when he's saying goodbye to mantis at the end man that was really nice and i wasn't expecting it to be sad but it was kind of sad and speaking of mantis mantis in this film is pretty nice as well pom clementiev gives a great performance to her she has great line delivery and great dialogue as well you know she has a scene with nebula and drax where she says drax is the only one who makes us laugh and really doesn't hate himself like all the other guardians i wish they would have kind of explored that sentiment about how the guardians hate themselves internally and how they need each other to unite and everything and be better but you know they didn't really do that they undercut it with jokes which is something i'll talk about later in this review don't worry but yes uh, mantis was really good in this movie she has some nice dialogue like i said and also at the end and throughout this movie she kind of goes on a journey of self-discovery through interacting with the guardians and at the end of the movie when she says goodbye and she's trying to go you know discover who she is and what she wants in her life i think that's a nice way to end her character off in these movies and you also have star lord i didn't talk about him in the first two or three characters because i didn't love him in this movie i liked him i think he was better in guardians one and guardians two um chris pratt gives a great performance in this movie however i just think that from a character and development and emotional perspective even he's been better in guardians one and two i'm sorry man not to say he wasn't good in this one but him kind of overcoming that you know not loss of gamora but her not you know loving him like he used to have her it was just kind of like eh you know they didn't really fully flesh that out they introduced it in the first scene he's like drunk he's depressed all that stuff but they never really feed into that all the way whenever they mention it throughout the rest of the movie most of the time somebody's making a joke about it even peter quill's making a joke about it i mean she he makes a joke in the clip for the movie he calls her the d word and all this other stuff like 
it's it's played out for jokes a good amount and i feel like that shouldn't be like that for the character and so it kind of diminished his role in this film a little bit and you know like i said it is very focused on rocket so star lord even though he's even though he's the main character of this care of this movie rocket is really the main character of this movie if you know what i mean and so gamora speaking of her she was solid in this film. Zoe Saldana does a great performance as usual. She's a great actress, but that attachment and that emotional connection to her character is slightly missing because this isn't the version of Gamora that we grew up, you know, knowing and loving. And so it's kind of different. I guess I have to get adjusted to it, but I did not love Gamora inside of this movie. And then you have Nebula. Nebula was pretty good in this movie. Karen Gillan's really coming into her own as this character, man. Nebula I thought was great in Endgame, and then she was really good in this movie too. So starting to see her kind of flesh out who she is, and we're learning more about her and how she's connecting with other people. She's a drastic difference from where she is now to where she was in the beginning of Guardians 1. So she definitely has had that development, and it's really nice to see that. That. And also, I mean, I guess you have Warlock. Warlock sucked in this movie. I'm not even going to waste my time on that bum. But anyways, now we're going to get into the stuff that I thought was mixed. But before that, I do quickly want to talk about a few more things that I thought were really, really good. The third act of this movie is very, very good, guys. The soundtrack is used correctly at every point in time. I mean, throughout the rest of the movie, I think they could have used the soundtrack more at certain points and less at certain points. Kind of inconsistent there. But in the third act, it was consistent. The action scenes are great. The VFX in this movie are pretty solid very much a step up from a lot of the other stuff we've seen speaking of the action the hallway fight scene at the end of this movie in the third act bro really really good stuff very very nice and to see them all team up one last time yeah that was pretty cool to see i'm not gonna lie to you but outside of that i mean i think the comedy landed pretty well i'd say that much i wasn't laughing a lot throughout this movie but the scenes that you know didn't make me laugh i smiled at least you know they were pretty well done so but on to the things that i think were mixed or bad Let's go ahead and talk about it, man. First off, the high evolutionary in this movie, I'm not a big fan of this guy. I'm going to be honest. It's not because I hate him because he's doing cruel things. It's because his character and the backstory and the story in general given to him is not really that strong. He's kind of just a villain that wants to, you know, hey, I want to evolve this and I want the perfect world. Why does he view the perfect world as being so cruel to all these animals and, you know, dang near killing Rocket and just, just destroying him and damaging him? It's like, I don't know why he views things like this and we never get the reasoning for it and we don't even know why he or why or how he got his powers it's kind of just like it's left vague we don't know what's going on with the guy and even though Tributi Awuji gives a great performance as the character we don't really get actual character story for the character <laughs> so it's kind of I don't know I thought the villain was underwhelming obviously Warlock I referenced him he's garbage in this movie he's just comedic relief and he's not really that funny I was expecting a little bit more from him but we didn't really get that Another issue I have with the film is that the pacing in the first act or first half of this movie is genuinely not good. There are a lot of moments where it feels like nothing new is really happening. We're just kind of getting these repetitive scenes with the Guardians. And some of those scenes are really good, you know, with the emotional moments and the funny scenes and just cool moments between the characters, right? But not all of that is cool moments between the characters. It's kind of just like slog. It's a slow period. And I feel like if they replace some of that slog with actual more good scenes with these characters or something that builds the story of somebody else it would have been great and you know i feel like that's just too much wasted time it's a two and a half hour movie that pacing's got to be down man i don't want to be bored watching this film you know what i mean it's supposed to be fun and entertaining while also giving us those moments of levity and those sad moments and everything along those lines and another thing about this film Rocket's backstory, I referenced it was a plus and a negative at the same time. The reason it is a plus, obviously, is because it fleshes out his character, gives us more attachment to his character, and it also explains why we should hate the villain and why the characters on the Guardians team have such a connection to Rocket and why, as an audience, we should too. But the negatives that come with that is that you're taking time from other characters. And if this is supposed to be the big conclusion to all these characters, which it really isn't, they all live, spoiler alert, but I mean... If this is supposed to be a conclusion to everyone, I feel like you should be balancing the time you give to all these characters. Because I don't think you should have a situation with Rocket where he's getting a lot of his backstory, but then a character like Drax, who we haven't really seen a lot of his backstory in any of these movies, really, besides references to it, we're not really giving anything to his backstory. And same with Mantis. You know, we already know she came from Ego, but what else has she done? And even with Star-Lord, we could have seen a lot more scenes that's going on with him, you know, the pain he's getting internally from not being with Gamora, or maybe some past scenes with him. You could have easily balanced out more 
more of those moments and those key scenes for different characters that would have made the emotional payoff and conclusion to this film a lot stronger than what it actually was. Simple things like that would have made the movie that much better just off changing a couple things. So that's why Rocket's backstory, yes, it's good for him and for other things throughout the movie, but overall, you would have been better off if you spread out some of those scenes to different characters. And then another flaw I have with this movie is that the fact that a lot of emotional and serious scenes that are really, really good in the moment, they get undercut by jokes right after that. And it's kind of like, what are we doing? Like the scene I referenced with, with, you know, Mantis and she's saying, hey, all the Guardians hate ourselves or hate themselves besides Drax. And it's like, why not explore some more of that? You know, Peter with his depression with Gamora, dive deeper into it. Give us some more of that emotion and that seriousness. Don't undercut it with jokes that for the most part weren't even that funny in the scenes. Like it's, that stuff really just annoyed me, man, throughout this movie. And it undercut a lot of good moments and scenes throughout this movie. And this is a issue. Undercutting serious and emotional moments with jokes after has been a problem all phase four most of the time. I mean, even in Ant-Man, we saw in Shang-Chi, he's explaining his backstory on the plane. And then somebody starts talking about beef. I'm like, what are we doing? You know, this is a reoccurring issue that in this movie, they just, they had it too, man. And it's kind of unfortunate. Then my last thing that I have with this movie is the fact that it's, this is kind of just like a marketing and you know how it's advertised issue. They're advertising it as some big emotional conclusion to all these characters. But if these characters were to never be seen again in the MCU, I don't think fans will be content with that. Like Star-Lord, he is coming back. They say that at the end of the movie in the post credits, but who, like, for the rest of these characters, Drax, right, if you never saw him again, and we never got to see the backstory with his daughter, and you know, how he got here, would you really be content with him just waving the mantis, and we never see him again? You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, what are we doing? And then with Groot, he doesn't really do anything in this movie. You know what I'm saying? Like, this isn't a fitting conclusion for everyone. Rocket goes on to lead the new Guardians. That's not a conclusion. Star-Lord's coming back. That's not a conclusion. We know Nebula and Drax, their story arcs are not finished. Same with Gamora. She's brand new. She's not finished either. So it's like, I don't know why this was supposed to be said to be a big emotional conclusion if all these characters could easily come back and they should come back to finish off these stories because they're simply unfinished and it's not wrapped up that well as everyone's acting like it is. So that's another problem I have with the film. And there's some minor gripes like, I don't know why we didn't see Rocket and Groot's backstory. I mean, if you're doing Rocket's backstory, where is the Groot stuff? But yeah, so overall with this movie, I wanted to really walk out loving this movie and think it was amazing. I didn't really get that. I liked it enough, I guess. It was a pretty solid movie, but overall didn't really live up to my expectations. Still solid though, I would give it a 7.5 out of 10. It's like a C plus B tier, you know, level Marvel movie, but it's definitely not bad and it's noticeably better than 97% of the stuff we've seen from Marvel in the last year or two. So guys, that is going to wrap it up for my Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 review. I know this review was actually extra long but I mean there was just so much that happened in this film so I felt like I had to cover it all but yes if you guys saw the movie let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below and as always I hope you guys have a phenomenal day peace out